Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Hitscan. Wanted to go over a few news pieces today. Not only do we have a pretty cool teaser come in for the new map Venice, it's actually in game that people can see for themselves, but also some buffs that may be coming in inverted commas, the characters like Viper, Jet and even Omen again, as well as finishing on a few things that the dev post put out on Pika's Advantage and all that jazz. But because that's all the news, we'll go over that towards the end of this video. Let's start with the new stuff. If you are keen eyed and you've been in the training range, of course, if you are in the game currently, you will notice that this is completely new. There is a rift opening at the top of the training range that wasn't there before, or at least wasn't as big or as prominent. And I think it's fair to say that it's going to be teaser for a new map that we know about, which is based in Venice. Venice was shown for a split second in the Project A Valorant trailer where they announced the name, but lots of people have data mined images and even mini maps of what this map may look like. If we go over the images of the map, we can see that there is a very prominent tower that's very easy to recognize in both forms of the artwork for Venice. And if you get closer to this rift, not too close as you will die, but you can see the tower in the solar reflection. Everything else around the rift is very hard to spot, but I think the tower is a dead set giveaway that this is what the map's going to be. And when it comes to stuff that was data mined in the game that isn't present in it, such as rays before, the Venice map is the only thing that isn't playable right now at least. So I think this is Riot taking a leaf out of Fortnite's book by trying to do like in-game events to tease future stuff. But not only that, we do have a mini-map showing what the map looks like. And I've done my best to try and line up what the map may look like put onto the Rift image. It doesn't line up completely, but it does give you a rough idea on what to expect and how it may look. Another interesting thing about the Venice map is it seems to have a gimmick much like all of the other maps in the game. Haven is free sites, bind is teleporters, Split has a very hardcore mid. I don't really know what the gimmick is meant to be on Splits other than the ropes, maybe. But on Venice, there's these danger zones. And if you data mine the minimaps, you can sort of see that there's two versions. One which is just a normal minimap, but one that's called Venice Danger Zone Mask. So maybe areas of the map become dangerous that you can't go in them. Kind of like an orbital strike cutting things off, perhaps. It's really hard to say. I don't want to try and guess it, but that's everything that we know about the map. And it's nice to see that this might be coming a lot sooner rather than later. Probably within the next couple of weeks, if I had to guess at least. But that's the main core bit of info. Now we have some interesting stuff that actually came out a few hours ago from Morello's stream again. Morello is one of the lead character designers on the game and he does stream frequently at twitch.tv forward slash Morello Riot. Not only is he a really funny guy to watch, but he also does answer a lot of questions about the game and what they're hoping for. In this, he was asked about changes coming to Jet and Viper and what people may be expecting in the future. Do I think the Jet needs buffs? Probably. We're trying to figure out what we want to do. But I think her and Viper, I think Viper I'm really worried about. She needs a little bit of help. But... Viper's in a weird spot where I think she's both underrated and underpowered. So we want to do something, but also some of it is like, I don't think y'all unlocking all the potential either. Of course, from this, it's hard to go into detail specifically on what may change. Jet certainly as a character is one of the weakest, if not the weakest. But I feel like there's a lot of changes that Riot can make to make her a little bit better. For example, reducing the sound range of some of her abilities. It's very easy to hear a jet coming at you from a mile away because of all of the, the dashes, the updraft, the smokes. They're all super loud abilities. So as soon as you hear like a you know that a jet's around the corner and wants to fight you. So maybe they can reduce that, bring it in a little bit, but also make the smokes last a little longer. Only by a few seconds, I mean. I think that's a nice change that they could do. I guess the point is that it's a lot easier to buff a character character like Jet than it is to buff say Bastion in Overwatch right because there's a lot more moving parts there but I 100% agree with the criticism of Viper I think she is a little bit weak but I think a lot more needs to be learned about the character I think over time her stock is going up gradually and people are starting to realize that she's a really good character especially on particular maps such as Split as an example but they aren't the only agents that may be getting changes in the future. Omen got buffed recently, but there are a few areas of his kit that don't line up, namely Paranoia, the visual side of the ability, doesn't line up to where the blind actually hits. So something that Riot are working on and may do some other bits and pieces as you'll hear here. <laughs> uh, Omen's blind is working. It's not working as we want it to. When uh, we launch the game, we're gonna do a big packaged update for Omen. 
not reworking his skills, but basically making it uh, better. Like Morello said in a previous video, Omen is the latest hero to be added into the game and certainly the one that isn't finished. Very much the one that's in a beta period that needs a lot more work, so if you are an Omen main, rejoice because you will be getting more changes that not only make your character better, but also more consistent and just more fun to play because everything lines up and it's not going to be as frustrating. When it comes to frustrations this week, a lot of people have been talking about the idea of dynamic queues and also the Pika's advantage problems which we highlighted in our last news video. We'll talk about dynamic queues first, a lot of people like Mendo, Defran have complained when they're queuing solo or in duos, they tend to go up against tryhard 4-5 to five stacks and it's very difficult to play if you're a group of solo queue players going up against a fully coordinated team of players. I can't really speak for that experience myself as somebody that hasn't really got to the ranks of Immortal or Valorant just yet. Yeah, of course, playing against teams is a lot more frustrating if you're playing in smaller groups. You should be matched up with solo queue players or groups yourself. And if you're trying to five stack in Immortal slash Valorant ranks, you've got to expect to have a long queue time. But remember back when Overwatch was relatively new, there were Brazilian six stacks queuing at like 2 a.m. in the morning because it means that eventually they would be put up against Platinum Diamond players because the match maker needed to find a game somehow so they exploited the system there no doubt it would happen again now but regardless this is something that Riot said about it they mentioned that it's important to us that competitive matchmaking in Valorant is focused on team play we believe that playing as a team is a major component in your overall mastery of the game. If players have a group of teammates they perform well with, we don't want to discourage them and set a precedent that the real test of skill is in solo play. Having a solo queue can easily lead to becoming the definitive test of someone's skill and a primary way to play competitively. We've opted instead to allow players to play at any team size that they prefer. We also think it's valuable for players to search for good teammates now for competitive play, so when high stakes competitions become available, they have teammates that they can rely on. A solo queue idea for ranked would be really interesting and really fun, I think, but it really seems that Riot isn't going to take that approach, but they did say in the dev post that they are open to ideas and criticism and want to talk to the community on this, which is really cool, and I hope that they are able to do that. It's one of the reasons why we have a competitive mode in the closed beta, right, to test stuff, work out what's the best way of going about stuff. But speaking of ranked play, a lot of questions have come in about that, certainly from our previous videos. One of the things that the devs wanted to come in and say is that winning or losing a match has the biggest effect on climbing and on your rank. It isn't just your KD, it isn't getting the top fragging spot. If you aim for these areas, like Riot says, then you may lose matches because of it, and then your rank will trend downwards. If you win in a more one-sided fashion, let's say 13-5 versus narrowly winning in a 13-12, battle i think you get higher rank and higher mmr points from blowing out the enemy team as opposed to having a close match yourself so you want to win and you want to win comprehensively not necessarily getting all the kills i don't feel like that has much of an impact nowadays but finally i want to go over this area real quick because most of you know about it pika's advantage is an area that we've covered before a lot of complaints from the community about how people could seemingly run around the corner and headshot you without stopping without being able to be hit in some cases a lot of people have been very critical of how this feels. And Wright's response on this is really important to go over, so I'm just going to read through it a little bit. Pika's advantage is never going away. It's something that exists for all games, but our goal is to minimize it as much as possible. Philosophically, we believe that less Pika's advantage there is, the more tactical the game meta becomes, which I agree with too. It's likely that you've come across a situation where you were killed by a player who appears to be mid-run. In actuality, on the server and from their point of view, they are standing still. The devs are aware of this issue and are thinking about some ways to improve it. There's like five different areas that they're looking at, but the three main ones are they're investigating all parts of the move and shooting accuracy to understand what's underscoring the issue, whether it's players being able to become too accurate too quickly from full running, or that shots on the move in certain scenarios are actually more accurate than intended. When we do have the changes, you'll see it in the patch notes. This came out after the patch that we saw this week too, so maybe more changes could come in the future. We are working on animation blending updates. When players come to a stop, we'd like to speed up the transition of their animation from from running to standing, the animation is sometimes lagging versus what has actually happened. And also, on the frame that you die, your corpse blocks full visibility of the enemy, so you can't necessarily see what the opponent did immediately after you died. We're going to fix corpse blocking in the next patch or two, so you can have constant vision of the enemy, and this will help to see if they actually did come to a standstill when they were moving. 
But this is a good amount of information on why stuff is happening this way and what Riot are doing to try and fix it. I'm really glad that they're admitting that there is a problem here somewhere and that they're trying to make sure it's a lot better because it is frustrating, understandable, of course, but very frustrating to be run and gun like that or at least having it feel like that. But regardless, that's everything that I wanted to go over in this video. Quite a few different areas. I didn't want to do multiple news videos this week. I just kind of wanted to go over the main stuff, the rift, future changes. That's brand new news, by the way. And then all of the stuff towards the end of this video, in case you haven't seen them. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all of the support recently. You guys have been amazing. Take care. We'll see you then.